y'all, I'm so excited. We get to start today's video with a new segment I'm calling Crushing Karens. Those who add self-loathing and drama to be cooking up some bullshit. Jennifer Stewart says, Oh goody, another creator using a child's horrific life and including the pictures of her abuse to make money good for you. First off, these photos came from a webpage dedicated to justice for Alyssa. And you can't have justice by hiding all the facts and or evidence. Second, to make money, honey, step into my office. Do you see that? $306 to $4.9,000 a year. Bruh, feed a family on that. And you just keep going. A sex joke during a true crime video where four young people were brutally murdered? Yeah, a sex joke. Why? Because America. And also because I have a sex life I'm very proud of. Prayers to any person responsible for your ultimate satisfaction because it sounds like they probably need as much support as a set of double D's doing double dutch. Let's read together, shall we? No one is forcing you to watch. Common sense would tell you that means I don't care if you agree or disagree with any of the above. If you don't like what I show on here, it's a simple fix. Don't watch. In other words, outside of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself coming and venturing into your TV watching room and threatening you with the fiery depths of hell if you don't watch the video, you are the responsible party here. Also, don't come at me whining and hollering about sex when this is your profile photo. Like, have some class. <laughs> now that we've checked out of the burn unit, let's get into this recap because you guys had a lot to say and a lot of it was super good. Gold star to this comment, this is how you live life and not be offended by everything everyone says. Margaret Ariki, hey, I'm really loving your post. By the way, I'm Colombian and love the comment about being from the Colombian jungle. You are a superstar. Isle of Shoals 3551, why would DM and BF be afraid of the right guys in jail? So I don't know that they're necessarily afraid, right? I will say it's a little weird that Bethany last year was a freshman and being that in March they were trying to get her to come from Nevada to Idaho to testify it kind of alludes to she didn't go back to the University of Idaho so it is one of two things either she is scared or not wanting to go back to that state for some reason Alexa Lake 7 says, in my opinion, Dylan and Bethany know why everyone was done in and are afraid for themselves if they tell the truth. Neither one of them wants to go back to Idaho if they can avoid it. Well, as far as I can tell, Dylan lives in Idaho, but it does seem, again, like Bethany is trying to avoid going back to Idaho. Joe Kaiser says, just to clear things up, the company, I assume, K-Bar does not make the knife that the Marines use. They are mixing the two up. The United States Marine Corps has never contracted with them. That is true. That knife I use for hunting. Take a wild guess what we do with it. I don't know where these people come from and where they get their info the knife is seven inches and you're going to have injuries on your hands like the chick did. Then we have Megan Chase, 6698, busting up in here with the big guns. Xana's not a big gal. If she was able to be fighting this attacker in order to sustain these wounds, sounds to me like she was fighting with a crazed, jealous female. That is a really good point you make. You would think that Koberger would be able to literally just handle that, if that makes any sense, without much resistance. However, I'm also one of these people that knows, like, hell has no fury 
like a woman scorn. And if a woman is mad, they literally turn into like the Incredible Hulk. Baja Boy 27, if Xena fought back and tried getting the knife, did this not include scratching at the attacker? Did she or any of the other victims not touch the intruders? Was there no touch DNA evidence, but somehow there was a single source of touch DNA on a knife sheath found under bed covers on the third floor, maybe planted evidence? It is a very valid point, right? Like, if Dylan can see this person's eyebrows, then clearly some parts of his face were exposed. But, I mean, you never know what the person is going to have the opportunity to grab and claw at. Mystica says, exculpatory evidence only she would have. Her knowledge, her experience, unique only to her. To me, that means she saw and heard things that do not match up with Dylan. Maybe Cover's defense knows that Bethany witnessed who did it leaving as she looked out the window when she heard them running down or out the door. Tell me that latent footprint doesn't belong to Bethany. Going up to see what the commotion was about and if her roommates were okay after texting with Dylan. So there is a lot of speculation in the comment, but I do like it overall, just simply because we do know that MPD or whoever used info from Bethany and Dylan's phone to ultimately stamp out a timeline for the murder. Well, it's one of the things they used, but as we see here, the combination of Dylan's statements to law enforcement, reviews of forensic downloads of records from Bethany and Dylan's phone, and video of a suspect vehicle as described below, leads them to believe it occurred between 4 and 425. However, there is still an issue with the statement. I've said it before, if you were lucid enough, to text or call anyone else in that home, you could have called 911. Even more insane is the time it occurred, 4 to 425, doesn't even align with what you all say you see in the video canvassing. The combination of the forensic files, the videos, you believe it occurred between 4 and 425. A review of footage shows multiple sightings of the suspect's vehicle starting at 329 and ending at 420. So this dude is just like killing folks driving down the road. But then in another statement, you say it's seen departing the area at approximately 420 a.m. So I'm going to tell y'all something that has literally bothered me the most since this affidavit came out. Listen to this part first. When did you get the call on Sunday? I got the call just a few minutes after noon that there were four homicides, but I didn't go to the scene um, because of law enforcement doing their investigation first. So I didn't actually go to the scene until about 5 or 5.30. So she got the call a few minutes after 12, didn't get on scene till like 5 or 5.30. In the press release, it states the friends had woken up, thought somebody wasn't waking up, so they called the friends over, right? At 11.58, a 911 call comes in. Yet on your official call log, you have it as 1156. Then in your affidavit, on November 13th at approximately 4 p.m., Brett Payne and Blaker responded to 1122 King Road. What took so long for your lead investigative detectives, the ones that you're going to put in the affidavit, to get on scene. Like you even point out that Idaho State Police forensic team beat 
you there. We're going to look at the calls, all of them, from that day just to see if there could have been an explainable reason for the delay. So you have like seven calls before 11 o'clock, right? Then you get a controlled substance and they called in the narcotic squad. Hold on. Y'all, something just hit the front of my house. I thought I was going to have to go outside and show them Bone Quisha. This, by the way, is the narcotic squad. Neither Brett Payne nor Sergeant Blaker are involved with the K-9 unit. But the part that really interests me is there are literally only two calls that come in after that one. One of them literally at 2.08, the other at 3.33. So why couldn't y'all get there earlier? It's how Carnut said, the question is, how do they have knowledge of their name at the top of their head? An officer doesn't remember names of persons that they went to calls. They go to so many calls every day. This means they knew these two girls personally. So I was wrong the other day. I said that Zana had dealt with them face to face before and Maddie had done it over the phone. However, there was one call that I was not personally thinking about and it was the one that Kaylee made to report the woman she saw that she thought was a missing person from Coeur d'Alene. Now this report does say that Kaylee called to report this info. She saw the woman at Walmart, didn't see the flyer about her being missing until like hours later. So then she called it in to the cops. This report was taken by Sergeant Blaker. And this was back on October 5th of that year. But this is the interesting part to me. What happened on 11-21-22? with this case. I mean to tell y'all some of your comments today have just given me life <laughs> like this one. Mystico said we need someone to get a K-Bar USMC 7 inch blade knife and a dead hog and do an experiment for us to determine approximately when the blade gets doled out or when tip breaks and whether or not the knife injury wounds change as the knife doles. So fiance and I would totally do this. I mean, shoe doggy. That's like a regular old Saturday night around these parts. Except if we posted it, we might cause Karen to like have a heart attack. Along those lines, FMBR2RM states BK was a vegan. I know several vegans and they never use anything with animal products. Just an odd thing for me. I 100% agree with this comment. You're so, like, anal about your food that what you eat can't touch pans that have touched meat, but you're going to walk around with a leather sheath on you? I mean, they literally make this same sheath in plastic, and I would imagine it's probably a lot, maybe, stronger. I ain't even about to say this overly long name, but I was today years old when I learned that Barbie might be out here cutting people hay. You never know. Joe's 6108, bro, I'm not waiting until noon for my friends to show up and call 911 for me. That's just me, I guess. Plus, how the hell did they report a possibly unconscious person when there was clearly a massacre? So why it was reported as an unconscious person, there are too many options for a reason for this to me. Like, the doors to the roommate's room were shut or locked. I doubt this because you would run the risk of spreading more of your DNA if you shut and lock the door behind you. And it seems a little quick to make sure that you're shutting and locking doors and buttoning everything down. Like a 16 minute time frame, I can't even get to the bottom of my purse in 16 minutes. Another option, the roommates 
Dylan and Bethany both wound up downstairs after eyebrows walked out and didn't want to go up there alone. But why? Because if you were not wanting to go upstairs, it would allude to you knowing something bad happened and you should have called the police last night. But let's just focus on the simple fact that you guys called people over before you just went upstairs to like check if someone was unconscious. If Bethany called not around Dylan, she would have no reason to not go upstairs if she didn't know of anything going on. If Dylan had come down to Bethany's floor, then she would have seen something. If Officer Payne and Blaker could see the body approaching Xana's door, then how do you, how would you not have seen something if you went downstairs? Hugh Holt says Dylan said they could not get the door to Xana's room, I guess, open. So his brother forced it open, which would indicate that his body was moved. Neither were in the bed as the coroner implied. The only way to tell who died first was the first person's wounds would have only their DNA, none of the others. Number one site for truth. So I don't know if Dylan actually said this. I don't know if this is really how this progressed. If it is, it still doesn't explain why neither one of you would walk upstairs and try to get help from Kaylee or Maddie. Donner9864 says, I don't see how a secret grand jury is legal. I mean, it has the word secret in it. Because of this secret grand jury, any one of us at any time could be indicted. And also, I haven't even heard of that before this case. Honestly, this case is exhausting. I can't imagine how the families and BK is feeling. I feel like he is the fifth victim. Well, I can say this. I know at any given time, any one of us could be indicted, especially if they use genetic genealogy to track you down because those records are absolutely never going to be seen. And Dotson Nader says, don't waste your time with the new Barbie movie. She dies at the end. I'm not sure if this is true, but if it is, the director, writer, creator, a whole bunch of idiots because you literally just blew your shot at a sequel and the movie's already made over a billion dollars. So good business smarts. On a side note, if you put this in here just to like get at me, and run the movie. You didn't. I knew what was going to happen at the Titanic movie. Still sat my fat ass in the theater. Huffing popcorn for three and a half hours. I'm going to die. But all the way until I get there. Is nothing but fun. 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 Hun. Chris Maxwell 3414 says. I love the thick type. See what I mean ladies? You should always know that you are beautiful, and guess what? There's a type for everyone, and you better trust and believe. You wouldn't know I didn't weigh 100 pounds when you turned the lights off. At NASDAQ, baby. Oh, girl, you got that stockbroker money. Anyway, you never will. But I can tell you if I was the parents of the children murdered, I'd be at both of their houses. You can say that again. One for you and one for me. Like... I would be livid and you would talk to me. Little Miss blog a lot. Brian's attorney here in PA, Jason Labar, said he never asked if someone else was arrested. This was only reported by Brian Itton from News Nation, who lies constantly. I honestly have not seen a lot of that out of Brian Itton, now his counterparts. We won't go there. But, um... <laughs> I just, I, I haven't known Brian Linton Inton to be this way. I'm not saying that he's not, but it's good to know that he didn't say that, if that is the case, because it was really random, too. Like, he asked him during transport on a plane. 
Well, friends, call me selfish, but I hope the airline loses all your luggage. That way you have no place to go but here. But if you're not ready to board yet, watch this video. And in the comments, y'all let me know exactly how they only found two male sources of DNA inside and one outside on a glove of this house. I live inside my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who help my cars and watch me weep I love everything Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe But that's alright Hush